Chapter 1 Tansen, the Magical Musician by Ashok Davar. Almost exactly in the center of India is a town called Gwalior. In this town is the tomb of Tansen, one of the greatest musicians that ever lived. Next to his beautifully carved stone tomb stands a little tamarind tree. It is believed that by eating a leaf of this tree and touching the tomb, a singer can improve his voice. If this sounds like magic, the story of Tansen is equally magical. Even today, many famous musicians follow the style of music created by Tansen, known as the Gwalior Gharana. About 400 years ago, in a village near Gwalior, lived a wealthy poet, Mukand Mishra, and his wife. They longed to have children of their own. On the suggestion of a friend, Mishra went to Gwalior to seek the blessings of the famous saint and musician, Muhammad Ghaus. Almost like magic, soon after receiving the blessings, a child was born. He was named Tansen. As Tansen grew up, his father engaged teachers to teach him to read and write. Tansen, however, was more interested in going to the nearby forest with his friends, where he would imitate bird and animal sounds. Once, a group of singers were passing through the forest. Tansen hid himself in some bushes and roared like a tiger. So lifelike was the sound that the singers became frightened. When the boy showed himself, the leader of the group praised his tiger-like roar. Encouraged, Tansen made more animal and bird sounds. The leader was greatly impressed by Tansen's performance. He was none other than the famous music teacher, Haridas. Haridas offered to take Tansen as his disciple. He has great musical talent, said Haridas to Tansen's father. Most reluctantly, Tansen's mother agreed to let her only child go away to Brindavan to study under Haridas. For almost ten years, Tansen studied music from Haridas, starting with the basic musical notes Sa, Re, Ga, Ma, Pa, Dha, Ni, Sa. He learnt the basics of singing and playing Tanpura. He learnt about the different rags of Indian music and how each rag creates a different mood. A rag can make you so happy that you might want to dance, or it can make you so sad that it might bring tears to your eyes. Then one day, there was a message from home that his father was very ill. I am happy that you've become a musician. Go and see Muhammad Ghaus, were his father's last words to him. Though very sad, Tansen decided to keep his promise to his father, to go to Muhammad Ghaus and be trained by him. But, in keeping with Indian tradition, he went to seek permission to learn under a new guru from his first guru, Haridas. You must obey your father's wishes, but you will always be welcome here. You are like a son to me, said Haridas, blessing his favorite disciple. Tansen studied under Muhammad Ghaus for three years, developing his musical talent. During that time, Muhammad Ghaus introduced Tansen to the ruler of Gwalior. They became good friends, and Tansen would often visit the ruler's palace, where he would listen to other musicians. One day, a messenger arrived from the court of Reva, near Gwalior. The messenger opened the scroll and read, King Ramachandra of Reva would like you to be a musician at his court. This was a great honor and the first step in Tansen's rise to fame. King Ramachandra admired Tansen's singing. The emperor, Akbar, once went on a visit to Reva. King Ramachandra arranged for Tansen to entertain his royal guest. The emperor was greatly impressed by Tansen's music and, soon after his return, sent a message to Ramchandra, requesting him to send Tansen to his court. 
King Ramchandra did not want to part with Tansen, but he could not afford to displease the powerful Akbar. After all, Akbar was the emperor of India, and Ramchandra was only the king of a small state in Akbar's empire. So, reluctantly, King Ramchandra sent Tansen as a royal gift. Akbar was so impressed by Tansen's music that he bestowed on him the highest honor of the land. Tansen was included among his Navratna, nine jewels, the nine most outstanding talents of the royal court. Besides performing in the court, Tansen would often sing alone for the emperor. At night, he sang rags that would soothe and help Akbar fall asleep. And in the morning, Tansen sang special rags that would gently awaken the emperor. There are many stories told about the power of Tansen's music. It is said that when Tansen sang, birds and animals would gather to hear him. One evening, Emperor Akbar decided to visit Tansen. When the emperor arrived, Tansen was singing and playing the Tanpura. The emperor sat quietly in the veranda and listened to him. So pleased was the emperor with Tansen's music that after the performance, he took off his diamond necklace and presented it to Tansen. Some courtiers became very jealous of the emperor's high regard for Tansen. They stole the diamond necklace given by the emperor and told him that Tansen had sold it for a large sum of money. When summoned to the royal court and asked to produce the necklace, Tansen was unable to do so. The emperor flew into a rage. You will be banished from the court till you can present yourself wearing the necklace, roared the emperor. Tansen was in disgrace. He had no one to turn to. At last, he thought of King Ramchandra and set off for Reva. Ramchandra welcomed his former court musician. After hearing the whole story, the king said, Don't worry. Just sing for me. Tansen sang two beautiful rags for the king. You have brought me great joy, said Ramchandra. And as a token of appreciation, he presented his jeweled sandals to Tansen. Tansen rushed back to Agra and placed the jeweled sandals in front of the emperor. Sire, please take the diamonds from these and forgive me. The jeweled sandals were worth much more than the necklace. The emperor immediately realized that he had misjudged Tansen and said, Your music is much more valuable than diamonds to me. I should never have doubted you. Return to the court as my royal musician. Tansen's fame spread far and wide. Tansen's enemies grew more jealous. They suggested to the emperor that he command Tansen to sing Deepak Rag. Deepak Rag was one of the most difficult rags to sing. Besides, so much heat would be caused by a perfect rendering of this rag that not only would lamps alight, but the singer's body too would burn to ashes. When Akbar asked Tansen to sing Deepak Rag, Tansen pleaded, Sire, Deepak Raga can set the singer himself on fire. But the emperor would not listen. Tansen knew that singing Deepak Rag was dangerous, but he also knew that if Megh Rag, which brings the rain, could be sung at the same time, he would be saved from the fury of fire. But how can I sing both ragas at the same time? Tansen thought worriedly to himself as he roamed in his garden. Suddenly, he remembered Rupa, a devoted disciple of Haridas. With the permission of Haridas, Rupa agreed to sing. Rupa was already a very good musician. Tansen used the 15-day preparation time granted by Akbar to train her. At the end of the two weeks, Rupa had perfected the singing of Megh Rag. On the day of the performance, 
the court was packed. Unlit lamps were placed on the walls. As soon as the emperor entered and sat on the throne, Tansen began the alap. As Tansen sang on, the surrounding air got warmer. The audience started perspiring. Leaves and flowers in the garden dried and fell to the ground. Water in the fountains began to boil. Birds flew away to escape. The lamps lit up and flames appeared in the air. People fled from the court in terror. As the emperor stood up, listening with awe, a rose that he often held in his hand drooped. Now Tan Sen's body was hot and feverish, but absorbed in Deepak Rag, he continued to sing vigorously. Seeing Tan Sen in this state, Rupa began singing Meg Rag. As her voice grew stronger and soared, the sky became dark with clouds. Soon, rain came pouring down. Many among the audience rushed out to be cooled by the rain. Soon, everything returned to normal. People showered praises on Tan Sen's genius. Though the emperor was very pleased, he was shocked that he had almost lost his greatest musician to the fire of the singer's own music. Tan Sen's fame now spread like the flames of Deepak Rag. Centuries later, Tan Sen's music has lived on. It has been passed on from guru to disciple. And every year in Gwalior, near Tan Sen's tomb, a music festival is held. Musicians come here from all over India to perform and pay homage to Tan Sen.